Tonight, Target was warned before the data breach. Hackers target U.S. veterans, and Washington is considering a kill switch bill. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 25 for Friday, February 14th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. I'm Jason Howell. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's get right to the tech feed. Before their payment systems were hacked, Target's own computer security staff was concerned about vulnerabilities. An article in the Wall Street Journal details how at least one analyst wanted a more thorough security review, which was denied. All of this was around the time Target was preparing for the competitive Black Friday shopping season. A former employee said the federal government had warned only a few months before of new types of hacks that targeted payment terminals. According to the article, it's unclear if the retailer reviewed their security systems before the attack between November 27th and December 18th. Hackers targeted U.S. veterans using a previously unknown zero-day bug in Internet Explorer. The security company FireEye discovered the attacks, which they're calling Operation Snowman. The company said the website of U.S. veterans of foreign wars was cracked and modified to add a link to a malicious web page that infected hundreds or thousands of users. Uh, machines. The pages contained infected Adobe Flash software. Now, FireEye said the attacker used infrastructure and techniques previously attributed to groups in China and that they appeared to be targeting U.S. military staff. A California bill introduced a week ago pushed for a mandatory kill switch to be implemented on all types of mobile devices, even those that aren't necessarily activated in any way, which some saw as overly broad. Well, a federal bill announced yesterday takes a more measured approach by limiting its restrictions to just cellular devices with the requirement that those devices have remote wiping capability and can be rendered inoperable in the case they are reported stolen. Now, wireless trade group CTIA is staunchly opposed to these kinds of bills, citing the risk of hacking, which might result in the bricking of a user's device unknowingly. CTIA continues to push instead for a, device, a database rather of stolen cell phones so carriers can determine which devices should not be activated. Now, coming up, can the Obama administration bring back Flappy Bird? Or if they could, should they? And next, David Spark is here to talk about the things we were once told to do but shouldn't be doing anymore on social media. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace on your own terms from industry experts with a lynda.com subscription Members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering a wide range of technical skills, creative techniques, and business strategies. You want to improve your photography, master new software, boost your web design skills, learn programming, all that stuff. At lynda.com, you'll find top quality videos on hundreds of different subjects. You can watch from your computer, tablet, mobile device, the instructors, their accomplished professionals, experts in their field who are passionate about teaching. And each course is structured so you can learn from start to finish or just jump in to find a quick answer. So here's what you can do. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library or for $37.50 per month. You can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses for free for seven days. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. All right, so joining us is David Spark, founder of the brand journalism firm Spark Media Solutions. Welcome to the show, David. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. Jason. It's good to have you back. Now, you have a new ebook. It's titled Hazardous to Your Social Media Health, and uh, you expose quite a few, 50 previously condoned behaviors that you no longer recommend. Give us, uh, give us a few things that you think everyone needs to pay attention to and stop doing on social media. 
By the way, I should qualify. It's not just me who doesn't recommend this. I got a <laughs> quote from 56 experts on the 50 things that you shouldn't uh, do anymore. And so these are all things that we used to do that experts recommended that you do. And maybe it's not a good idea anymore. So, for example, like using social media dashboards to cross post. Uh, this was recommended at one time because it was efficient. But as we have seen, the uh, social media services actually downgrade the value of these cross postings, like for example, Facebook won't sort of promote your post if it's cross posted. And also we all see where these come from. So it seems a little um, annoying that you're, mm -hmm. that you're cross posting across multiple platforms and it's obvious to the users. And, and again, you don't get seen as much. Yeah, absolutely. I'd completely agree with that. It's, it's, it's a lot more work when you're managing all of these different social media feeds in different ways, but it's kind of a little bit more satisfaction uh, guaranteed in there because each of those groups get a, gets a different, unique perspective. And, and that's become an, uh, become an issue in, in social media in general where someone recommends something, you do it, and then the, the tools out there that we use decide, hey, uh, we don't want it, you to cross post, and we're actually going to... Uh, uh, you know, negate you if you sure. choose to behave like that. So again, just things we did before, you can't, you shouldn't do, and maybe because it's ethically wrong or just technically you're not going to get the same reaction that you got before. Absolutely. Now, one of your uh, one of your tips is stop telling your stories. Isn't that what social media is all about? Kind of telling what your story is. Uh, what What do you mean by that? So, in some cases. People really don't want to know your story. Now, yes, <laughs> it, 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 it's true. But a lot of times people just want your offers and your discounts. And that's pretty much the level of the relationship they want sure. with you. So if that's the kind of product or service that you're offering, just give them the offers, give them the deals and let it go at that. Just don't even bother telling your story. Understood, understood. Uh, now, this one stood out to me as well. Stop ignoring people that don't agree with you. And, and I know this firsthand. I'm sure we all do. It's easy to see something, you know, come across and have this knee-jerk reaction and just brush it off and move on with your day. Why is responding to something that you don't agree with uh, so important? So this, uh, I mean, I've had personal experience with this as well, but where it really came through was I spoke with uh, Ethan Austin, who's one of the co-founders of a service called Give Forward. And he says every single one of the people who have become the uh, uh, people who promote their service, um, they, they started off as a detractor. They came to them saying, you know, hey, I hate this service. It's not working because of X, Y, Z. Well, that shows that they have passion and interest in the service. And this is an actually an opportunity to engage with. If you ignore them, then they are only left with their own thoughts to sure. stew about how angry they are with you. So use this as an opportunity to reach out and to engage with them and turn them from a, de a detractor to uh, an advocate for your service. Completely agree. It's amazing when you do that with someone, you know, most of the time they aren't going to expect an answer. And when you do, it's almost immediate that they're like, you know what? Sorry, I said that. You're, you're pretty awesome. Here's, here's what I meant. It completely changes the story. Right. They don't think that they're yeah. talking to a human. They think they're yeah. talking to, you know, some big company uh, organization. They don't Absolutely. realize there's a human behind it that will actually respond. Right on. Well, thank you so much, David. Uh, how can people find your ebook? Where can they go to, to find your work? You know, the easiest thing is just go to the business site, sparkmediasolutions.com. There's a link right there at the top. Uh, it is 100% free, and uh, it's entertaining, and you'll learn a little something. Yeah, I certainly did. Uh, David Spark, thank you so much for joining us once again. All right, so the American people aren't going to take it anymore, so they petitioned. President Obama to step in and stop this injustice. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm speaking, of course, about the removal of the Flappy Bird game from the nation's app stores. Man, the game was removed by its Vietnamese creator, Dong Nguyen, uh, because he felt guilty about how addictive it was. Well, the petition was added on the official White House petition site, but quickly removed because it violated the site's terms of participation. So now, obviously, we need a petition to restore the petition to restore Flappy Bird because it says right there in the Constitution that Americans have the right to addictive Vietnamese time-wasting games. It's that little tiny text down there at the bottom. Ah, forget it. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2, and I hope that you do. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.